Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to go over conditional formatting. Conditional formatting is used to visually highlight something based on a certain condition. A quick way to remember this is that if something is true or false, then you can change the format of the cell. So the best way to understand this is to look at an example. Let's go to this grades tab, and in the grades tab you can see that we have column A with a list of grades out of 100. Over in column F and G, we can see the breakdown in the grades here. So a D for us will be a failure, and then we have C, B, and A within these brackets over here. So first things first, let's look at our failure grade, which is going to be anything less than and including 60. So to get to our conditional formatting, let's click the A2 cell and hold down shift and go to A19. Now there's two ways to access conditional formatting. First, you can right click and scroll down to conditional formatting here, or you can go up to the format tab and click on conditional formatting here. As you can see, a sidebar appears and it gives you is not empty for a formula rule. Well, first we don't want that. So we need to change this for our rule. As you can see, apply to range will be A2 to A19. So that's the range that we want to apply our conditional formatting to. Next, our format rules. So we want everything left than and including 60. So let's click this drop down menu and see if we can find something that will help us here. Here we go, less than or equal to. Now we can change the value to 60, which will update. You can see over on the left hand side, it's previewed in green. Now green is probably not an, a great color for a negative value. So let's make that into a reddish color. So you can go down to the color bucket here and change that to a light red and that looks a bit better. Let's italicize that as well because it's a failing grade to help it stand out a bit more. Okay, now that's done. Great, so now we have the grades C, B and A. Now these are usually success grades and we could probably highlight them by saying C is for example a light blue, B is slightly darker blue and A is a, a further darker blue again. Now we've already got our range selected and we already have the conditional formatting bar up and open. So what we can do is go to add another rule. So let's click on that. And again, it comes up with this automatic is not empty. That's fine. We're going to format the rules and let's find something that will give us between 61 and 74. Okay, is between. Let's click on that. So now we can put in our value 61 and 74. Okay, so our first range, we wanted to make a light blue. So let's make that a light blue here. And we can click on done, or we can add another rule. Now, here we can do add another rule, and it'll maintain all this formatting, and then we just need to make some minor changes. So let's do that now. Add another rule, and let's change the bracketing from for our B grade, so 75 to 89, 75 to 89 and change that background color to something slightly darker. Uh, it's not too distinguishable, so let's make that a little bit darker again. Okay, that's more clear. So our final item to conditional format is anything greater than 90, as you can see here for the A grade. To do this, we can simply go down to add another rule, and this time we want to change the, the formula rule to is greater than or equal to 90 here. Again, we need to change this to 90 for the greater than value. And then let's make this quite a darker blue. So let's go down two more color grades to here. And you can see that the letters are a bit washed out. So let's change the letter color to white. And you can see that white color is popping against the dark blue now. And you can click done. And now we have our list of grades. And we can see easily that our lighter grades are Cs. Our next lighter blue grades are Bs. And finally, anything that is an A, 90 above, is in a dark blue with a white uh, text. And then of course the failure grades are italicized and in red. All right, let's move on to another type of conditional formatting. Let's hit this empty over here. Here we have a list of appointments and we want to make it easy for the user to come in and see which days are available. So what we can do is highlight any day that is available or highlight the names of people that have uh, have been filled in. So let's do both for an example. So here I'm gonna select from Monday, which is uh, B3, 
um, from 8 till 9 and then all the way down to Friday from 2 to 3. So we're going to hit click and then drag it down to here so it's all selected. This time we're going to right click and go down to conditional formatting and as you can see automatically uh, comes up in our conditional formatting it says is not empty. I'd imagine this is probably the most common use case so they, they pre-select it with is not empty. So if we just wanted to select the empty cells we might want to change this to is empty and you can see the color changes there. As always you can change the color palette to anything you like perhaps a uh, purple this time and you can see what days are empty and if we hit done and for example if you wanted to add in a date now so for example Tuesday at 9 to 10 and I wanted to type in Jerry and the conditional formatting will automatically change so it's a very powerful way for you to see at a glance what is available and what isn't okay great so let's move on to our final set of examples in our categories tab Okay, so here we have three columns. The first one is categories, and it's just a bunch of food. And the next one is true or false, and finally we have courses. In this portion, we're going to talk about how to get certain parts of text using the whole text or just particular parts of text that we want to highlight. Let's have a look at our category A, and hold down Shift and click down to A18. So the first thing we might want to do is to say um, something that starts with Okay, so let's say we want um, one color for vegetables and we, instead of typing out all the vegetables in our conditional formatting, we might just want the, anything that starts with V. We can do that easily with our conditional formatting. So we go up to format this time, conditional formatting, and let's say uh, text starts with V, E for vegetable. And you can see now that that's been highlighted. Vegetables are often green, so we'll make them that a green color. Cool. All right, let's have a look at another example. We've got fruit. We'll make fruit yellow. So we can go down here, add another rule. Text starts with again, and we can go F for fruit. Oh, it looks like it's green again. No worries. Let's change this to a yellow color. And then we've got our fruit. Again, if you go FR, it's going to be the same. If you start changing it again, so for example, if I type in FRE, then that conditional formatting won't work because it's looking for the first letters that contain F followed by R, then E. So the text that starts with is not case sensitive. So you can type in lowercase F and R and it'll still conditional format as well. Okay, so let's leave that as that. And let's look at another one. Let's look at ends with. So we can click uh, done here. And we can add another rule. Anything that ends in Y, we might, uh, which is dairy, we might want to change that to, to something else. So let's go into text ends with, and we can say Y. And what's a dairy color? I don't know, it's a light grayish color, perhaps. There we go, so dairy. Okay, so one more example of this one, so we can go down. Add another rule and we can go to N. Um, so N is grain and something that ends in uh, N for grain. So we'll make that an orange color. Text ends with and we can go a light orange for grain. Okay. And finally, we can use the exact text as well. So if we want, if we have something like meat, for example, we can type in M E A T and there's, uh, we can find it along here so text contains no text is exactly meat and we'll change that to a red color for meat well it's a bit dark let's change that to a lighter red color and then we've got our meat color there done cool so i'll close that again now for a true or false we can use the same steps again um, this time we can just use something as simple as text contains to select true or false. So let me hold down, uh, click cell B2 and then hold down to B18. I'll right click this time, go down to conditional formatting. And this time we have uh, text contains. So anywhere within the text, it contains true or false. So for example, if I have uh, false, 
I want to make that a bit of a red color. Ooh, down here, we want to make that a bit of a red color. So we'll go down to fill color and we'll make that uh, this color here. Nice. And we might change our text to a really dark red. Great. Okay. Nice. So with text contains, we can have false here and we can also have false, I don't know, goat. And it'll still highlight because false is still part of that phrase or part of that text in the cell. So let's delete that and hit enter. And again for true. Okay. And then we'll go to add another rule and we'll hit true this time. Now, again, of course, it's going to select everything, but we will change our fill color to a nice blue and our text to a dark blue. Oh, it's too light. Let's make that darker and hit done. Great. So for our next example, and this is something I use quite often in education, is to highlight all courses in a particular group of sections. So here I've got 104, so that's course 104 and section 5. And there's another one, course 104, but this one is section 17. So I want all the courses to be the same color. Um, so first, let's hit cell C2 and hold shift down all the way down to cell C18. Let's go to format this time, conditional formatting and let's go to text contains so our first one 101 we'll go 101 dash uh, just in case there's a, a section called 101 it stops any confusion there and we'll keep that color that's fine and we can hit add another rule let's go to 102 and change this color to a light blue and add another rule, 103, change the color again, and add another rule, 104, change the color again to a purple color, and 105, it's already distinguished because it's white. So we can hit done. So if there's too many colors there or you're not particularly happy with this type of conditional formatting in the cell and you wanted to try something else, you can easily delete the conditional formatting by going up to each one. You can see here there's a little bin and you can click remove rule. So if I click on this one for 104 and hit remove rule, it's deleted and I can keep going all the way through until they're all deleted. Okay, so this just scratches the surface for conditional formatting and there's so much more to learn that it's probably a good mini course all on its own and something I would like to, t to cover in the future. So please subscribe and uh, when this mini course is out, uh, you'll be able to access it straight away.